What's up guys and welcome back to another G35 video. In today's video we're going to be installing some motor mounts on the G35. This job is a pain in the ass and what people usually do is they'll wait until they pull the motor if they need to and they'll end up replacing the motor mounts like that. So I'm going to be showing you guys the fastest and easiest way to replace these that I have found. This still won't be an easy task. You are going to need a friend as well. It's definitely a lot easier than pulling the whole motor and all the other methods I've seen. Let me go ahead and show you guys. So one of the easiest methods that I found was actually from another youtuber his name is simply Eddie so you end up using a stubby wrench 14 millimeter you use a box end on the nut for the top of the motor mount you're gonna end up using a 14 millimeter hex bit this is gonna be on top of the bolt you're gonna go ahead and use the hex bit and you're gonna turn you're essentially mimicking a crow's foot but this is a little bit longer so you'll be able to reach you're gonna need a 14 millimeter hex bit you're also gonna need a 14 millimeter stubby wrench something that may happen is when you're trying to loosen up the bolt you may end up stripping it since you don't really see how well the box end is on the bolt This is a 14 millimeter stubby, but it is a hex grip from Matco It ends up grabbing up to 90% rounded bolts So this is perfect for in case you end up messing up you have a safety and a backup for it It is really tricky to finagle the whole wrench on there So I recommend picking this up I'll leave a link in the description for this one so you can check it out here We have the stubby and let's pretend that this is on the bolt what you're gonna go ahead and do is pass the big extension over you're essentially gonna get it on there and turn and you're gonna loosen up the bolt like that that is the easiest and quickest way you can do it it gives you enough space when you go ahead and do this where you can put the hex bit perfectly on there since this is gonna be out the way the mount works it doesn't have a lot of play and a lot of space for you to be able to use the open side you can only use the closed side box end side of the wrench I ended up stripping the passenger side since it's kind of a pain to do the driver side is really easy in comparison to the passenger side so just letting you guys know so once you take off the two top bolts then the bottom ones are pretty easy you can just go ahead and use an impact bang them out so I ended up rounding the corners on this nut that was the top one on the passenger side the extractor one took this off really easy that's what you're gonna need to do to take off the top nut let's go ahead and take off the bottom ones and then I'll show you guys what to do after so once you're under the car to take off the bottom bolt you're gonna be looking right in between your lower control arm and your subframe there's gonna be a bolt in side right there that you'll go ahead and take off it's a 17 millimeter once you take that off on both sides uh, motor mounts are just being held by the weight of the engine so that's when you're gonna go ahead and put a piece of wood on the oil pan and jack it up with a jack and you're just gonna jack it up just enough to get the engine mounts out and put the new ones in a lot of the times these bolts tend to not be on there all the way over time they just end up backing out so when you're putting the new ones on I'd recommend putting a little bit of thread locker or else they will back out over time common thing that happens with these cars but yeah when you end up installing these back on I'd recommend putting some thread locker on them and you should be good I'm using a wood block under the oil pan and I'm having the jack lift up on the wood. You want the piece of wood to be longer than the oil pan so it disperses all the weight. So now I'm going to lift it just enough to where I can go ahead and take out the motor mount. Make sure that you're not hitting anything when you're lifting the oil pan. There shouldn't be anything in the way but just make sure. So when you're jacking up the engine you want to make sure you're only jacking it up enough to where you need it. Right now I can lift up the engine mount but I can't take it out. So that's how I know I need to lift up a little bit more. Once I can take it out, that's when I stop lifting. You don't need to lift all the way, uh, just so you don't mess up anything that's connected to the engine. You wanna minimize the risk of that. All right, so here is the engine mount out now. I ended up lifting it up and it just ended up falling out. Here we have the driver's side. So we're gonna do the same thing and do the passenger side. So I do have an oil cooler and I have the lines running through and I also have that oil filter in the way. Easiest way is to take off the oil filter and you'll be able to take it off no problem. But I didn't wanna do that, so I had a go ahead and route it through the back side and took it off that way all right guys so these are going to be the motor mounts that i'm going to be running i got these off of static martin shout out to him so the cool thing about the z1 motorsports ones is that they're polyurethane so they last a lot longer and the way they're designed is they're always on compression what ends up killing the oem mounts is that they're on tension and compression so when the engine is on load and off load it ends up doing compression and tension so it's pulling on one and then it's compressing the other one so these mounts work on compression 
suspension of both sides so you're not gonna wear out as quick as the OEM mounts are so these only have a couple thousand miles on them but they are gonna last a good while I'm excited to have these on the car they're a little bit stiffer than the OEM ones so it shouldn't be too rough of a ride this is gonna be a great addition to the track build that I'm doing since these are gonna last a lot longer than the OEM ones and these can take the abuse a lot better When you're installing the top bolt, make sure it's just hand tight and it has wiggle room so that way you can go ahead and put the mount onto the hole. After you drop the engine all the way, then you can go ahead and put the bolt on the bottom and then you'll be able to torque them all to spec. So the way the Z1 motor mounts work, they get rid of this and they actually have that whole aluminum construction. So you don't need to use this heat shield and you can just go ahead and discard of that. So another thing is this bracket is going to be on the driver's side when you first take off the top nut. So I ended up bending it down using a pry bar and just a hammer and hammering this all the way down. So that way you can have the wrench that is going to be right here moving freely without hitting this bracket. So like I said, this isn't going to be an easy thing to do, but it's a lot easier than any of the other methods. Even with the tools this job is a little bit difficult so having these tools is going to make a big difference in getting it done so you will need a breaker bar you will need the extensions with the 14 millimeter hex drive bit then you'll need a stubby 14 millimeter wrench and then you can also buy the matco one that's going to help you out in case you end up stripping it by accident you'll have this one to take care of it so looking at z1's instructions the top bolt is supposed to be torqued at 32 to 40 foot pounds then the bottom nut is supposed to be torqued at 65 to 72 foot pounds and it's definitely recommended to use thread locker and all the nuts just so that they don't back out because it would suck to have them back out while you're driving and not even notice <laughs> All right, guys, so the car is good to go now. So we're going to go ahead and do a first impressions drive. I want to see how they feel. And just as a check to make sure everything is good, we're going to go ahead and take it for a drive and I'll let you guys know how it feels. All right, guys, so this is the first drive that I am doing on the polyurethane mounts. And right away, when you start up the car, you can definitely hear and feel a lot more vibrations. But the car feels good. I feel like as soon as I press the gas, there isn't a lag that I had beforehand. And it makes it feel a lot more direct than before. If you aren't looking for performance, I'd recommend going with an OEM mount, but if you are looking for performance, I would recommend this mount for sure. So you feel a lot more on the idle than you really do once you're driving normally. Right now, cruising speed, I literally don't feel a difference from a OEM to a poly mount. The only real difference you'll feel is when you floor it. Since it's under load, you're gonna feel the added stiffness, and you'll also feel it on idle. That's when you're gonna feel it the most since it is gonna be idling and moving moving around a lot more than before. So now everything in my drivetrain going from the differential to the transmission and the engine mounts, everything is polyurethane and I can definitely say that it feels a lot stiffer and a lot better for performance. If this was my daily driver and that's all it was gonna be, I would definitely stick with OEM rubber. I'm not gonna go ahead and sacrifice comfort to have the added performance. But since this is my daily and also is my track car that I'm gonna be building, polyurethane is a no brainer. It's right in between rubber and uh, having solid so you have to act out like me on my car go what's up guys uh no i can't i was about to say, <laughs> about to say. by the way we're actually doing a video on his e36 on the next one we're going to be installing coilovers on the e36 so next video this. he'll be having that shoe fitment not that double fisty that, nor these imagine that they're oem i don't think they're that bad leo hates these clear headlight jeez <laughs> What's this, Leo? Why is there a coat hanger oh, on the car? Know about that. Oh, oh. It's my quick release, homie. <laughs> <laughs> So there you guys have it. That's going to be all for this video. I gave you guys my thoughts on the motor mounts. Not too crazy of a difference, only at idle and maybe when you're on throttle. When you're cruising around, it's not bad at all. It's actually pretty close to stock. It's honestly pretty simple to do. It just takes a good while. It's one of those time consuming things, but it is doable. So that's going to be all for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy this. Leave it a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new around here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.